there's one um, term or piece of vocabulary in blasting that doesn't get talked about a lot, but it's actually like one of my favorite words and one of my favorite topics to explain to people, and it's called friability. And so friability basically is how well a piece of material will hold up when it impacts something else. Um, so like everything has um, the property of friability and has a certain amount of it. I don't know the exact measurement or what that unit is, but for example, if you're blasting steel, a hard steel, let's just say, or just a regular steel, and you're blasting that with crushed glass, crushed glass has a higher friability than the steel. So that means that the glass is actually the, the, su the substance or material that's going to degrade during the interaction of blasting. When the glass hits the steel, the glass is actually going to fracture and break down and turn into a dust and can't be used again because it has a really high friability. And it's not going to do much damage or do much removal on the steel because steel is stronger, if you will, or has more friability. So when we're using like steel grit, that has a, a higher friability than, um, or I'm sorry, a lower steel grit has a lower friability than crushed glass. So steel grit, we're able to get multiple impacts out of that. So when we're blasting with steel grit as our blast media and it's hitting the part and it's removing material and given the part of blast profile, that steel grid is not breaking down nearly as much as crushed glass. I mean, obviously every time that steel grid hits, it gets a little bit tinier um, and eventually it goes to dust. But on average, we get about 2000 impacts out of the steel grid before it goes to dust because it has a really low friability. I mean, if you can use it 2000 times, that means that it, it's, it barely gets hurt when it comes out and hits the substrate. You get a, then you get, you know, 1,999 more times before it goes to dust. Where it's crushed glass, the friability is so high that once it hits, it's done. Um, you could pick it up and put it back in the pot, but it's it has broken down so much at that point, it, it's basically just like blasting with dust. So it's gonna be really dusty and it's not gonna hardly do anything at all um, to the substrate that you're blasting um, because there's just nothing left of it. And so, uh, blasting materials, all blasting materials um, have a characteristic of friability. You know, we mainly talk about cr uh, crushed glass, steel grit, and aluminum oxide. And um, but there's way, way more um, blast medias out there. So there's, you can use, we always are talking about grit, but you can actually also use like shot or bead, which is rounded and does more of a, a peening. It will still clean, but it's more of a peening, um, where grit is actually um, angular and pointed. So it, it actually removes material a lot better instead of hitting and bouncing off. It actually kind of hits, it, instead of bouncing right back, it kind of hits in and is helping remove material. Um, but yeah, like there's some um, coal slag, garnet, some people still use sand, um, but but not not very regularly because there's some some environmental issues with using sand. Um, soda, walnuts, corn cobs, and so there's all these different kinds of blast media, and there's there's more that I, I'm not thinking of right now, um, but they all have different friabilities, and and friability for blasting is a really good. Um, material property to look at to, to figure out you know how much will this grit or media or shot that I select hurt the substrate that I'm blasting so if you're blasting a really thin piece of metal uh, let's say a thin piece of aluminum because aluminum is pretty soft in comparison to regular steel it, you would want to use a pretty high friability blast media because if you got a really thin soft piece of metal that you're trying to blast you don't want to 
damage it, you don't want to warp it, you don't want to blast a hole through it. So then you want to use a blast media that's really high in friability. And we don't talk about that material property much and I don't hear manufacturers or sales reps talk about that very much because it's more on the technical side. People just know like, oh, crushed glass or walnut shells or corn cobs are, are um, not very aggressive. And so that we would use that on, on um, lighter weight materials that are really thin that we think might, um, we don't want to damage or worry about damaging. But the reason why the, the scientific, the, the engineering behind it and is that it's because those blasting materials have higher friability, they break down when they have the impact and the blast media is breaking down in comparison to the substrate. So the substrate that's really thin and soft is actually okay because we're using a blast media that has higher friability than the substrate. So if you flip that around and you use steel grit on something that's really thin and soft, now the, the, the substrate itself has a higher friability than the media itself. So, like if you're blasting a really thin aluminum with steel grit, you have, you're gonna actually eat away your, your soft aluminum substrate and you're gonna warp it and probably blast a hole through it because you have a, a low friability blasting media. And so, that's just something to think about. It's more of the, the science and engineering behind selecting a blast media and it's something that I think about quite a bit when we're trying to, because, you know, it's one thing to say like, okay, we don't want to warp this, so we need to use a, a, a not a, a really, the least aggressive blast media that we can find. And that makes sense. But if you're also trying to consider removal rate, so if you want, like, we need to use crushed glass on something that, for us, like if it's aluminum or a car body, we use crushed glass, we don't warp it. But if you then you're trying to figure out like, yeah, but we, this is a, we gotta do 10 cars for a particular customer, let's say, and they want to try to get the best deal that they can, we wanna try to give them the best pricing that we can. We might be able to go with a different quality or grade or size of crushed glass that still won't hurt the substrate but gives us better removal rate. And we can evaluate which blasting material we should select by looking at the material property of friability. And then knowing that that helps give us a, you know, because you have a lot of different um, options when you get into any steel grid, crushed glass, any of those um, blast medias, then you can go with the size of media as well. So you have all these different options and they all affect how good the removal rate's gonna be and then how um, dangerous or, or aggressive the blast media is gonna be on the substrate. And so if you have experience with all of those different types of medias and tested them all, great. But most of the time you don't, and you don't have time to get a ton of samples and test them. Uh, but friability is a good material property to look at to where you can jump to different types of blast medias and different meshes is what they call it, which is, you're talking about the size of all of the media, um, and you use friability to compare everything to figure out, okay, you know, if we're, we normally use steel grit with this and it's usually this size, we, now we want to try to use um, crushed glass or corn cobs, and it's going to be this particular size. What's the friability of what we were using originally? What are we going to? You know, if you're really trying to make sure you don't damage a part and don't warp are you a part, you want to make sure that the blast media that you're going to has higher friability. Because if you go with something that has less friability, but you just think that it's going to to be not as aggressive, you'll be disappointed and you're gonna ruin somebody's part.
So for me, uh, when we can get into the science and engineering of things and look at material properties, I get excited about that because that, that is part of my engineering background. And I like analyzing stuff from that standpoint. So friability is a really important property. Uh, what it really comes down to is friability is a material property and it is measuring the how a material is going to break down in an impact. 